Okay, so guys, last episode, Brett, we plugged in all of our microphones into the stage box. We ran the multi-core from the stage box to the desk. What do we do now? Okay, now obviously we've got to plug the multi-core into the desk, which is all these multitude of uh, XLR mic leads. All right, so you've got a lot of leads there. Where do you start? Okay, so you can see on the uh, back of the desk here, we've got all our inputs and output channels. Mm -hmm. Our multi-core consists of both as well. So we've got, uh, we've got 32 input channels and eight output channels. We're only using about 16 input channels at the moment, so we don't need to plug them all in, just the ones that we need. And we're only using about six of those output channels. So uh, two for front of house and four for monitors. All right, let's get stuck into that. Okay, let's plug it in. Okay, Brett, so now we're back at the mixing console here. We've got a lot of leads, um, a lot of inputs. Where do we start? Okay, so the, the, it's pretty easy. You just got to look at the multi-core. Of, co of course, we've got 32 channels, so each one of them is going to be labeled. Mm -hmm. This one just happens to have them on the, uh, the little strip here. So I've got, the, uh, I've got five to seven here, so I'll start plugging in these ones. If you want to find the other ones, we'll start, start going ahead and plugging these in. All right, great. So our inputs are labelled input, that's quite easy, they're all white, that's, that's easy to identify. And we also have our outputs here on these yellow ones, and they're just uh, labelled 1 to 8 as well. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, and while I'm here, I've also got my uh, talkback mic here, so I'm going to plug that into a spare channel so that we can use that to talk to the stage. So I'm going to plug Sounds that good. in, 17. Okay, so we've got our outputs here. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the way that I'm running my front of house at the moment is that I'm using an outboard EQ. So that's, that's it to, uh, to the right of our desk there. So that means that I need to run my front of house output, my front of house left and right output out of the desk into the EQ through its rack and then that comes back out into the, uh, the multi-core to go back to the amps. We can do that with the front of house as well, but um, I, just, I, 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 just, I chose to have an outboard EQ for my front of house. It just makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker for mixing. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my wedges. They're three to five on our, uh, uh, three to six on our outputs. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. Now a general rule with uh, digital desks, the main uh, front of house left and right output will be the last two outputs of the desk. Mm -hmm. So on this one in particular, it's 15 and 16. We have 16 outputs on that. So I'm going to find my one and two, because these are the ones we're running to the outboard rack. I've got my leads from my rack here. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, two females. One's marked left, one's uh, not marked, so that must be right. OK, so we just go ahead and plug that in. Mm -hmm. So that's now our front of house into the EQ. Okay, so that's, that's, all, the, uh, that's all the input leads plugged in. Mm -hmm. That's all the multi-core done. So that's signal going back to the stage as well. So all we need now is power. We plug in the power and our desk is ready to go. So now that the desk is turned on, can you show us a little bit about it? Okay, so as you can see, there's a, there's a lot to look at on this desk, but you can break it down into sections quite easily. So this section here, we can see, these are all our inputs, and this is also laid into a separate layers as well. So what we see here is the first 16 channels. We have a button here to switch to the next slot. This is a fairly common thing on most, um, uh, most digital desks. Uh, it also has auxiliary ins and a bus master. Bus master is uh, for auxiliary outs and allows you to set the you know, master levels for different buses and whatnot. Okay, so We've got our inputs here, and over this side we've got another set of faders, which are, these can be a few different things as well. On this particular desk they can be set to DCAs, which are like groups, uh, which means you can um, group certain channels into things, so you can have your drum, all your drum channels coming into one fader, as well as you know, all your instruments into another, all your vocals into one. It just depends on what you really want to do with those. Okay, so one thing we need to know about are the bus masters here. This is how we do our, uh, our, our monitor mix. This is the easiest way for me to show you. Okay, so we can just select a bus master. So this is one. The way I set up my monitors on stage, we go uh, left to right, one, two, three. So that's the front row, and our drummer is number four. Okay, so looking at number one here, what we can do is press a sends on fader button, and now we can see what channels have been selected to go through to that, uh, that bus master. Okay, so that's, that's a quick rundown on uh, our faders. Okay, we'll look at the, uh, the individual sections here next. 
Okay, so we've got a, a whole bunch of uh, encoders up here. Now, this one here is our config preamp section. This is where we set our gain, and it also has our high pass frequency uh, encoder. This we can switch, also from here we can switch on 48 phantom power. Oh, let me select a channel. Here we can switch on 48 phantom power. We can change the phase. Uh, changing phase is, um, it basically inverts the, the, the waveform 180 degrees so that it, it helps to counter it. Like, uh, it can help with feedback and things like that. It's, it, it's, sure. it's, it's a handy little trick. Okay, below that we have our gates and dynamics. Our gate uh, is a noise gate that allows us to um, basically, when the sound is below a certain threshold, it will completely cut off the noise. So that, that prevents things like uh, feedback building up just by turning off the, the channel when it's not needed. Okay, so we, next here we have our compressor. Uh, this allows us to, to, to compress the sound coming, uh, coming down that channel. So that allows us to, um, uh, every decibel that's coming through, on the, on the ratio that you set, say if we set a two to one ratio, it means that every one decibel over the threshold, it takes two dB to make it raise by one. That's a little bit complicated, but um, it's, it's pretty easy once you get your head around it. Okay, so the next section, we have our equalizer, and most people know what an equalizer is. This, this There's a uh, parametric four band equalizer. So this, that allows us to set, uh, I'll bring it up on the screen here. You can see that we can set little curves on our EQ here, so we can bring up the mids and the tops and all kinds of things like that. So that allows us to um, to refine the sound of a, a, an instrument to um, get it to do what we want through our PA or whatever. If, it, if it's an acoustic guitar that sounds horrible, we can try and make it sound good. Uh, at EQ, as always, is just colouring. We cannot uh, we cannot fix something with an EQ. Next to that, we have our main bus, which uh, allows us to um, set the level going into our mono bus, which we're not actually using, we won't worry about that. And uh, our stereo bus is our main left and right channel, so if that's not selected, that channel isn't going to front of house. We need to make sure that's on. And here, we also uh, are able to set panning, so we can, uh, we can pull a sound to the left or right of front of house. So uh, if we have um, guitars, we can, um, we can separate the guitars to the left and right to give it a bit of a stereo image. Uh, things like your overheads, you want those panned as well. Anything like that, that has a stereo image that allows us to actually set where it's coming from the PA. Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously next to that we've got our screen. And the screen uh, just uh, gives, gives us all our information that we need. Gives us all the, all the readouts. But it, it allows us to go into our effects and have a look at the different effects that we have on this console. Mm -hmm. And it also allows us to have a look at the EQ that we're using for, for the different foldbacks. Uh, the best button to know on this one is home that always gets us back to the, the main screen so we know exactly what we're working with. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a basic rundown on the different, different functions of the disc. So Brett, you did mention the outboard graphic equalizer. What's that actually used for? Okay, so um, we've got all our signal coming into the desk. We've got our outputs going back to the stage, but in between that, I'm actually using the outboard as my e uh, the outboard rack here as my EQ and compressor for front house. So what that means is that I'm taking the left and right front of house output from the desk, that's going into this outboard EQ, that allows me to tune individual frequencies of the front of house speakers. So uh, basically that's, um, every room has a different sound to it. Um, every room has different resonance and all sorts of, um, you know, uh, uh, reverberation and feedback problems. So basically it allows us to uh, pinpoint individual frequencies on a 32 band scale and uh, that allows me to either amplify or attenuate the, uh, those particular frequencies. So generally in a small room like this with a short roof, we get a lot of uh, bottom end feedback. It you know, builds up, so I'll, I'll bring down some of these bottom end frequencies. It just depends on which one. And the way I go about finding these, those frequencies and all that individual stuff is that I'll just sit here and I'll plug a microphone into the desk and while we're setting up, I'll be talking into that microphone, maybe playing some music that I know. Uh, and that way I can actually hear what's going on and I can, oh, 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 hang on, that doesn't sound quite right. Mm -hmm. Let's try that one. Yep, no, no, that, yep, okay, next one, yep. So I will actually go through each one of those uh, individually and find frequencies that so don't sound quite good to me. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and tune my front of house speakers to the room that way. So Brett, now that we've plugged the multi-core into the back of the desk, we've had a quick run through as to what's going on in the desk here, all the different functionalities. We've also looked at the EQ, other than that, what is there next? 
Okay, so we just need to make sure it all works. And uh, the easiest way we go ahead and do that is we do a line check. And that means that we check each individual channel, make sure that the, we can hear what's coming through. It sounds clean, sounds how it's supposed to. And then we solve any problems from there. If there's a problem with anything, we go ahead and fix it. And then from there, we can go and do a proper sound check with the band. So that means our signal chain is complete. Okay, great. Well, I'm looking forward to the next episode where we'll do the sound check. Okay guys, well welcome back. Now Darren, what's been your experience performing live and you know, what are some things to look out for for an electronic live set? Yeah, definitely. So one of the most important things that I could say to everyone out there is bounce down your live set, put it on a CD, press play at the same time as your live set goes. You don't want to be that guy standing up there going, oops, you know, you know that, that's happened to probably every live electronic music performer, but if you can limit mm -hmm. that, yep. yeah. And don't be asking around like just an hour before you said, has anyone got CDs? Bring your own CDs. On the tech rider for when you get booked for a gig, make sure you've got enough table space and just make sure that, you know, um, they know what you need in terms of monitoring. Do you need stereo? Do you need this, that? Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Table space as well. Yeah. Because promoters always forget about leaving enough room for people to actually set up. Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, have you faced any problems at a live set before that you've had to rectify quickly? Yeah. Uh, my very first Reality Pixie live set, um, everything went wrong and um, it was lucky that I'd burnt that CD because I was able to troubleshoot things step by step and eventually I mixed into my own set with my live set onto the CD, so huh. that was very handy. Alright, alright, yeah. great. Okay guys, we'll, we'll see you after the break for a live set with Moe.